sticking with my mixing tip, compressing reverb. So uh, in working with effects, we often talk about how we compress individual um, tracks um, and how you compress basses and drums and vocals and all that sort of stuff. And less often what's talked about, but you do hear occasionally, is compressing reverb. And there's a lot of cool ways and and that we kind of work with um, compressing reverb. So I'm just going to open up a, a sort of really simple, like nothing, you know, really uh, super special kind of compressor. I'm just going to open up a, our compressor here. I'm going to duplicate it into a couple things so it can show a couple of options here about how to compress reverb. So one of the th reasons is, one of the things you want to know is, why do you want to compress reverb? So what I've done here is I've actually just set up a bunch of, of simple sends. They're all feeding um, uh, post pan. So you can see that the, the pan pots here are grayed out. They're giving me the exact same imaging. That's important. And it's just feeding into a simple R verb, which has a chamber program. So a chamber, it can be kind of most simply defined as sort of like a room with a tall ceiling, more or less is what a chamber is. So you get a little bit more size and kind of openness. So let's just kind of listen to what we have here for... for So one of the one of the issues that we have with with drums quite often is that in order to get that reverb to kind of cut through some of the other instrumentation and be able to hear it, because if you start adding in like other elements, there's music in your voice. Right, you, all of a sudden you can see how much that reverb kind of gets covered up. And one of the ways of dealing with this is actually to to go ahead and uh, open up a compressor, place it afterwards, and I'm going to show you a couple tricks that I like to use for this. Um, and, and then we'll kind of um, throw these in. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to pick a bus here. Uh, in this case, just going to pick bus 15. I'm going to feed it from the kick and the snare, okay? And there's a reason why I specifically do this because this will be kind of the main triggers. And it's specifically for drum reverb. So if we were doing vocal reverb, it might be slightly different. But the basic idea here is is more or less the same. So I can turn this on or off. But what I can do here is an external key to the reverb. And this gives me some flexibility about how I want to treat it. So here, what I might do is I might, uh, you know, work with somewhat of a musical timing for the song. All right, so let me just, uh, just kind of quickly calculate what would be a, uh, okay, so that would be a quarter note, just quickly calculating a delay time. So that would be uh, basically what, 760, so be 350, 380, doing a little math, so like around 190 would be uh, probably a good release time. So I'm just going to start there. Um, so we're just doing a little quick math in my head, something in there, just to kind of get a musical release time with a fast attack, and then we'll kind of um, we'll kind of manage this from here. So um, the release times, I've made other videos that talk about like the release time characteristics. And and now what I want to do is have this kind of triggering. So you see here what I have is like basically about 3 dB of gain reduction. Kind of primarily triggered by the kick and the snare. Now if I just compress the reverb, for example, from the output of the reverb, typically what ends up happening is that um, the um, it doesn't trigger as consistently because now you're not getting that direct feed and it doesn't operate as fast. So uh, the problem with just compressing the output of a reverb, and I'm going to show you another approach that doesn't have the sidechain kind of thing, is that um, you won't get the consistency and the breathing and the pumping and the movement. And what this is going to allow me to do, if I open up the reverb plugin on the separate side, is that when I have this breathing, I'm going to have some makeup gains. So it kind of dips um, the reverb, okay, and then it opens it up. So you, it kind of like opens up the back end of the reverb, which allows us to hear the tail more accurately. And what this is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to um, take the actual reverb itself and shorten the length of the time so that it's not as long. Because if I bypass this, So you can hear how it sounds longer already.
So you hear how short that sounds? And how much longer it sounds? So that's really important because the shorter I make the reverb time, because most of that tail you don't actually hear in the context of the other instruments in the song. So by getting this to kind of work and breathe within a shorter timing, we're actually pumping up the overall reverb volume so we can hear it a little bit better. And it's also breathing in a musical timing, probably very similar to what I would do with the drums themselves. Another option for this would be to expand it. And in this case, I'm gonna have a little bit of make down gain and this really gives me like a little bit more, I'll just leave it kind of at zero. So what this is doing is it's pumping up. And I'm gonna, gonna bring this ratio down a little bit to give it a little bit more consistent. So what this, this, what this is going to do is it's going to pump up the reverb and now what I can do here is probably go to a longer release time. And uh, so let's see, this would be like 380. And what I'm going to do here is just open up this guy right here and feed a little bit more kick in. And this is something where I would also probably trigger that with the uh, with the toms as well, and in this case, so that when the toms are kind of keying in here, they're also keying the reverb to happen. And what this does is it with the release time now it's doing the opposite, so it's pumping up the volume for the length of time that I want it, and then it's pulling the gain downward. So this adds a little more depth. This is a little bit more forward. So the reason why this adds more depth is that it's dipping when the tone of the drum is happening, which kind of pushes the reverb back a little bit, whereas the other one is pushing the reverb out at the same time with the drum, which is kind of sucking the drum a little bit back with the reverb. So it kind of pulls them together a little bit more. So one, they're kind of doing opposite things. So there's like a couple techniques. And then um, one other technique, which can also just sort of smooth out a reverb, if you wanted to do it, is to do more of just a, a really simple, this is like uh, one of my favorite techniques you've seen on, on some other things, just like a tonal balancing kind of thing, where you just basically have it compressing all the time. And so I'm not so concerned about the musical attack of the release. What I really want to get is some solidity to it. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm kind of taking the overall thing and making it more consistently dense. Without. So let's go back to the where are the verse we can hear it a little bit better. Another quick way of doing this, and then I'll kind of wrap this up, would be to to use something that's like a low-level compressor. And uh, so this is something where uh, if you have just like something simple like an MV2 that gives you a low-level compressor and a top-level compressor here, what you can do is you could just set this so that uh, it's basically squishing the reverb, making it more dense. So you're pulling the bottom level up, low level information up higher, and then high level information, the peaks down lower. And this really brings out a lot of the detail of the reverb.
And this brings up, this is really great for bringing out the detail in reverb, especially the, the um, low level compression. So whatever technique works though, this is an important way to help make the reverb kind of breathe and move with the performance. And so uh, compressing reverbs, really, really powerful technique and, and really great at, at getting the most out of the reverb when you're using it. So you're not stacking up piles of reverbs in your mix. There you have it, the mix uh, technique of the week or mixing tip of the week, uh, compressing reverb.